Hi folks, Jay from Broken Arrow. Today I'm going to talk to you about choosing binoculars and also a rangefinder, which ones to go for. So the first thing we're going to look at is binoculars. So you'll see uh, when you go to choose a set of binoculars, they all have these series of numbers on there, like this one for example is 10 by 42 and this is 12 by 50. What do, what do those numbers mean? So if you, if you see a set of binoculars, the first number 10 by is the magnification power. So this is a 10 times magnification. Um, the 42 is actually the millimeter size of the lens. So 42 millimeter of the main lens in the binoculars. So what that does is if you go for a larger size, 12 by 50, so this is 12 times magnification, but it has a 50 mil lens, so a larger size lens. What that's doing is these the larger size lens binoculars are better for low light situations. So if it's early in the morning, late in the afternoon, they're gonna let more light in, so it's gonna be give you a much more clearer picture to see. Uh, one of the issues with going for a higher powered, so 12 power, if you go up to 18 power, that sort of thing, is that trying to hold them steady. The more magnification you have, the harder it is to hold them steady. So if you had, for example, a compact set, like smaller than these ones, they're usually, Oh, eight by thirties and things like that. So they'll only have eight points magnification and a 30 mil lens, but you try and hold them steady, they move around a fair bit. So the larger diameter lens helps you to get a more steady picture as well as give you more light when in the low light situations. So, you know, it's something to think about when you're buying binoculars, um, what you're gonna use them for, what's the max distance. If you're using them, for example, for archery where um, field archery where you might only need to look out to 50 yards but you're in the bush you've got low light so you probably want to look at getting a larger diameter lens and not so powerful magnification because you're only going short distance depends I guess what you want to look at so binoculars yeah those numbers just give you an understanding of what those are for the next one we've got is rangefinders choosing a rangefinder different types um, they're all different. Some have uh, what we call bow mode. So bow mode is, um, okay, so the range finder that calculates when you're shooting uphill or downhill. Um, most range finders, the cheaper ones, will just measure horizontally from your eye to what you focus them on. Um, like golf, for example, they're all flat terrain. So you, you know, you can pick the pin out and measure the distance. Archery is a bit different because we are shooting uphill and downhill out in the field. So we want to know um, if you buy, spend a bit more money and get one with bow mode, what that does is calculate the variation of downhill angle for gravity and same thing uphill for gravity because it can affect the flight of an arrow how soon it drops off. So it'll calculate that and give you the a more accurate distance. Now with regards to like a cheaper pair, this is like an Aldi set for like 60 bucks. Um, they work perfectly fine. They, they, they can change the mode from yards to meters. So whatever you want to calculate your distance in is changing that like most range finders. Um, but the difference is they're not being out on the range with people. And you know, I've ranged something and said, yeah, that's 27.8 and they've ranged it and it's 25.4. We've both got range finders, we're both seeing the same peg, which one's right? It doesn't really matter. When you buy a range finder, you use it to set your sights. So on your bow, you've gone, you know, if this one says me that's 28 yards, you know, and I've gone, gone low or whatever, I know that every sight setting on my bow is calculated by this range finder. It doesn't matter what anyone else's range finder says, it's the one that relates to what your sight settings are. Um, when you get up into the higher level range finders, some of them have um, little computer chips in them where you can program into the range finder the bow speed. So, you know, 320 feet per second or whatever you're shooting, whatever you're shooting at in bow, put that in there. And what that does is put a, when you look through the viewfinder, a line at the peak height of your arrow. So whenever you, if you're hunting, for example, and you're out in the bush and you're ranging something like that, you can look at the line and go, oh, gee, my arrow's gonna hit a tree branch if I try and shoot that distance from here. So it'll give you a guide to where the peak of your arrow flight goes based on 
your arrow speed. So range finders, um, there's various qualities of course. Um, the main thing I look at for is like waterproof and shock resistance because they do get a bit of a bashing around hanging off your quiver and so forth and it can rain while you're out in the field you know and if you've paid a few hundred bucks for a range finder and it gets wet and it's destroyed it's no good so certainly look for a weatherproof one uh, or make sure that you you know put it in a pouch or something if it starts to rain all right so there's a couple of simple things for binoculars and range finders to look for so i hope that helps thank you